to Nehemiah chapter 4, verses number 10. The Bible said, And Judah said, The strength of the bears, the burden is decayed. There's much rubbish, so that we're not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst of them, slay them, and cause the work to cease. It came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence you shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore I set in the lower places behind the wall, <clears throat> and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with their, fam with their sword and their spears and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and the rest of the people, Be not you afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, Fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard it, that it was known unto us that God had brought them counsel to naught, their counsel to naught, that we returned, all of us, to the work, everyone unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my, my service wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the... Uh, Hebrigons or whatever it is, and the rulers were behind all the houses of Judah. They which built on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laden, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one, had his sword girded by his side, and so built. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles and the rulers of the rest of the people, The work is great and large. And we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place thereof you hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work. Half of them held the spears from the rise of the morning till the, st the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, I, I unto the people, let every one with his servants lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, save that everyone put them off for washing. Uh, you can hold your places. I'll try to stay right here in this chapter again. Uh, in these verses, and of course you know, Nehemiah is building the walls. He's restoring the walls back uh, in Jerusalem. They've been torn down. If you go back to chapter number 1, you'll find that uh, Nehemiah is the king's cupbearer, he finds, and, and he, he, here comes somebody from Jerusalem, 70 years the walls had been torn down. Nobody had done nothing. They just uh, let them, just kind of got used to the walls, used to the situation. They wouldn't make it no progress. They wouldn't trying to rebuild. They wouldn't trying to accomplish nothing. They just got content with the fact of the garbage and the walls being torn down. And uh, Nehemiah, when, when he came in, Nehemiah said, how's things back home? How is everything? And he said, well, uh, he said, the gates is burned with fire, the the walls is broken down and said we're in a mess and said we're in reproach and much garbage. And you know the story. The Bible said that Nehemiah, uh, a, a burden fell upon Nehemiah to go to work and rebuild the walls. And he prayed about it and prayed to God. And, and then he asked God uh, to uh, uh, do something. And God put it in his heart to build the work. And you know the story. He went before the king. He was the king cupbearer. When he went before the king, uh, he was the one who tasted the wine. He was the one to eat the food before the king did. If he killed him, then the king didn't eat. <laughs> Boy, I wouldn't want that job, would you? Amen. But, uh, uh, and if everything was okay, then he was okay. And then the, the Bible said that he, he said, why are you sad? He never came before him sad. He said, because the people back home, the walls is tore down, the gates is burned, just got news. And I've got a burden to go back and build the walls and do a work. And the king said, how long you be gone, so and so forth. And he told him, and God blessed him. The king blessed him and gave him lumber and gave him uh, uh, labors and gave him all kinds of stuff to take with him. And the Bible said in the closing verse chapter 2, he went down and reviewed the walls and seen the situation and looked all over. And then in verse 17 of chapter 2, he said, you see the stress uh, that we're in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, the gates are burned to fire. Let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we be no more approach. And he told him about the good hand of God upon him and everything. And they said, let us rise and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. And in, in chapter number three, they went to work. In chapter three, they went to work. This, this, this uh, uh, 
group worked here uh, on the fish gate, another gate, another gate, and all the way around the wall. They was working and laboring side by side and building the walls. And you come to chapter 4, and opposition begins to rise against the work of God. You know, anytime you do anything for God, you're going to have opposition. Right. And you might as well make up your mind. If you make any kind of commitment to God, you're going to have opposition. If you commit to read your Bible more, you're going to have opposition. <laughs> if you commit to pray, you're going to have opposition. If you commit to give more or get more involved, anything you do, you're going to have for God, you're going to have opposition. Amen? You know, I never have had no opposition if I said I'm going to watch more TV. <laughs> I never have. Never have had no nothing to fight, nothing that ever fought me. Amen? Flesh didn't even fight me. Amen? Uh, anything you ever do, but anything you do for God, you can bank on it, you're going to have opposition. And so the opposition begins to start here in this chapter, and then in, in verses number 4, uh, uh, Nehemiah begins to pray for him. Verse 6 says, So we built a wall, and the wall was joined together, the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. They've got about half of it done now. Still got work to do. Still got things going on. It's been hard. It's been, uh, uh, and you read it and you hear it. Uh, one of them had got a hand in the sword. The other's got a hand to work. They're having to watch the enemy doing everything. They're trying to accomplish this wall. Of course, we know in 52 days, uh, which was a miracle, they restored the wall that had been torn down for all these years. They restored the wall, built it back. city was safe. The work was done and completed. And so all this, uh, Nehemiah here, is about the work of God building a work for God. And that's what we're interested in as a church is to build the work of God. We don't want to get content with what we got. <laughs> Amen. There's still empty pews around here. Amen. Uh, that we can fill up. There's still missionaries we can support. There's still more works that we can do for God. And it's never going to be accomplished fully, of course, till Jesus comes. But there's a work. And we are co laborers with God. We are God's workmen uh, and to accomplish a work for God. And so I, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes on the way people talk about the work of God. The way people talk about the work of God. There's all kinds of comments about the work of God. But here I want to give you three things out of chapter 4 about the way people talk about the work of God. Now look at verse number 10. Uh, the Bible said, and Judah said, Judah said, the strength of the bears of the burden is decayed. There is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. It says Judah said. Now here's what Judah said. This is the voice of doubt. Judah said, we can't. <laughs> Judah said, we can't. There's so much uh, 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 rubbish. And, and the burdens of, of the, uh, they've been working, they've been laboring, they're tall. And you know what? The weariness of their man. They was weary, they was tired. And they said, we're weary, we're tired. We worked and we worked and worked. And it looks like we just got half of it done. And that looks like there's as much garbage left as my friend we've already moved. And there's so much rubbish and there's so much uh, 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 work and toil and labor that we just can't can't build. We just can't do it. We can't accomplish. We, we might as well quit because we just can't do it. It's too much tiring. It's too weary. and It's too much involvement. It's too much rubbish to do. There's too much work to do. And we just can't. <laughs> Amen? That's what they said. We just cannot accomplish. We cannot build the wall. And you know what that people what say today? They said because of the day we're in, we just can't do it. <laughs> Because of all the situations that we're in, we just can't build a work for God anymore. We just can't. It ain't like that. I'm going to tell you what, and I've preached this all three services. I've been here. God's the same God. God's still, the Holy Ghost is still here. Word of God's still true. You can still build a work for God. You still can get people saved. You still can accomplish things for God. But you'll never do it with the Spirit if we can't. <laughs> I thought about I thought about the nation of Israel when they went over there and sent the spies, my friend, to go into the Canaan land. They came back, and my friend, they, they was carrying they was carrying grapes, clusters of grapes, of so big that they had to put it on a stick, and two men had to carry one cluster of grapes. They, they seen it. They said they came back, and said it is a land full of milk and honey, but we can't do it. <laughs> There's giants in the land, and we just can't. Caleb and Joshua said, we're well able. They said, oh, no, we can't do it. And you know what? God allowed them to wander in the wilderness because they had the spirit. They can't. And you know what? Not none of them. Out of all the many people in, in Israel, uh, my friend, all the men of Israel, only two, only two people got to go across and enjoy Canaan land. The rest of them died. We can't, we can't, we can't. <laughs> 
And Judah said, well, can't we just can't in the days we're living in, we just can't. I remember, I remember years ago when I lived at, where, uh, at the other place where I lived, uh, Mr. Tilly lived right down below us and our, our, uh, the driveway came up to his house and uh, his son's house and his house and it dented into our house. And, and, uh, and he would come, and right down below where my property was and his property joined together, he had a garden. Every year he put out a garden. And I mean, he, he, he would work that thing, have a beautiful garden. And every year I'd say, I'm going to put me in one of them gardens out. <laughs> I look down there and see them tomatoes hanging on there and them beans are growing and, and all that stuff. I so, said, boy, next year I'm going to put me one out there. And you know what? And, and then, I, uh, you know, every year I'd say that. I'd go down and I'd say, man, and he'd work and toil and labor and my friend piled up and my friend sew all that and work. I've seen him back there so tired, he'd just sit down and scoot down through there and my friend clean out the rows and stuff and he'd work and labor, have the best garden you ever seen in your life. And every year I'd say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Uh, I'm going to build me one in gardens. I'm going to have one. I'm was going right up from him and I'll just plow that out I'll put me in the garden every year uh, I, I said that and you know every time and when the garden would start coming in he'd bring us stuff up there he'd bring us tomatoes and he'd bring us corn and, and my friend he'd give it to us he'd stop us going up the drive hey preacher take you some beans up there and I said Mr. Till next year I'm going to put me one out I'm going to get you to have I lived there 25 years never put a garden out Never, not one time. Uh, you know what, Dad? I got so used to eating out of his garden that uh, I didn't go to work and put me one out. You know, sometimes I think we're so used to, we're so used to some preacher doing everything. We're used to so-and-so doing everything. Uh, and we're just in sitting back and enjoying everything that's going on. Uh, and my friend, we're just enjoying what's happening. Uh, and we're hollering, we can't do that. Uh, we can't do that. We can't be, we can't get people to say, we can't be on the church. We can't get saying, we can't teach. We can't, hey, we can't do anything. I'll tell you what, they had a spirit of we can't. And you know what? They never accomplished anything with that spirit. Judah said, we can't do it. <laughs> Come on now, help me out, huh? Uh, that's, that's like I talked this morning, five loads, two fishes. My friend, all the things that God done, and the disciples, when they looked at the disciples, said, feed them. They said, we can't. <laughs> oh, we got 200 pennies worth. Come on now, help me out, huh? We got that spirit. Uh, about every church you go to, there's just a little handful that does everything. <laughs> amen? Come on now, help me out. Say amen. Say amen back there, okay? Amen. Listen, uh, uh, my friend, listen. That, that's, that's the attitude we have sometimes. Did you know, my friend, we need that, we need that spirit that, of that little train, uh, that, that story we had when the little train got started up the road and said, I can, I can, I think I can, I think I can. And you know what? He accomplished it. Uh, and my friend, because he just kept thinking he can. Uh, but you thought that spirit, we can't. We just can't. Uh, we can't do this. We can't do that. We can't accomplish this. And we can't accomplish that. Uh, my friend, I don't know about you, but when uh, Bella got up and sung, my friend, my heart was overflowed. Amen. Uh, I turned around to James and said, I don't make you feel bad for not volunteering to sing. Amen. Uh, uh, my friend, listen, I, I thought, babe, if she can sing one, I can sing one. Amen. Uh, and, and I loved it, man. It blessed my heart. Uh, but you know what? We're sitting around, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I can't accomplish this. And, I, and that was the spirit of Judah. They was ready to quit. Halfway through, uh, and they're ready to quit. Uh, they done been labor. They done been working. They accomplished half of it, the Bible said, in that verse uh, that they had a, a, a half of the work thereof and they still had all whole half to do and they wasn't accomplished they wasn't through the walls wasn't built the city wasn't protected their family wasn't protected and all of a sudden because they got tired they got weary and the, the greatness of the task they thought we can't we can't we can't go on no more we can't build no more be careful you'll get that spirit <laughs> amen sometimes we get that spirit we can't you know what we're saying well we've worked and worked and worked here for years let's we'll let somebody else do it <laughs> Amen. Sometimes us old people like that. We'll get that attitude, you know. Well, it's just we, we've done work and worked and labored. We'll let the young folks do it. Well, who gave you the right? You don't retire on God. Right. Amen. Amen. You may retire from your work, but you don't retire from God's work. We thought, well, we can't do nothing no more. My best God, if you if you can make it to Walmart, you can make it to church. Amen. If you can make it to Walmart, you can make it, my friend, to visitation. You can make you can about if you can make the Walmart for that crowd, you can just do about anything you want to do. Amen. 
Well, that, that's, a, that's a cop out. That's an easy way out. That, my friend, that we can't. I mean, when I was pastoring down there in Chattanooga, or not Chattanooga, but Knoxville, I was pastoring Knoxville, and, and, it, and sometimes I'd just get up on Sunday, especially on Sunday nights. Uh, I'd get up, I'd say, oh, we're going to sing a little bit. Uh, and I'd say, oh, sister, you come on. Uh, and I'd say, you come on, you come on. Uh, and they'd all, some of them say, we can't. I said, well, you can get up here. Uh, and my friend, I'd call on them. Uh, my friend, some of them couldn't carry a tune in the bucket. Uh, and one lady, I mean, she was bad. Uh, she was really bad. Uh, and when I called on her one night, and I said, now, listen. Listen, uh, I, I, I said, uh, I know you've always told me you can't sing, and we've heard you. Uh, and I said, I'm going to tell you what you do. You just pantomime, amen. Uh, and, and you say, you didn't do that. I did, too. Uh, and, you know, she sat up there and just never helped me, never raised me. I just told her, say, ain't nobody know the difference. Uh, but she was having herself a ball. I looked at her and she did the great and the sang it, uh, and there wasn't nothing coming out. Uh, but she got up there and she tried. Uh, and my friend, you know what? It wasn't long she'd come back and said, Preacher, if I join in, they won't nobody know the difference. Uh, and I called on her again, and she sung out. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you can't, you think you can't, they say we can't, but some of the biggest blessings we ever had was people that said we can't say. they get up and they would try and they would get, they must, nobody else would got a blessing, but they got a blessing because they tried and said we can do something for you. Amen. And so Judah said we can't. We can't. We can't win our neighbors. We can't. You know, we got that spirit sometimes. We can't win our neighbors. We can't get our people saved. We can't get loved ones in here. I'll tell you what, if, if, if nobody else can, you know what he said? He said, fight for your families. Do it for your families. Do it for your sons. Do it for your daughters. If nothing else, build the work for them. Right. So Judah said, we can't. That's the voice of doubt. They said, we can't. Then look at, look at verse number 11. Not only Judah said, the voice of doubt, we can't, but it said, and our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease. The, the, the Judah said, the voice of doubt, we can't. Our adversary, the voice of disturbance, they said, you won't. <laughs> they said, we're going to make sure you won't build the work of God. You won't build it. We're going to come up against you. You know what? You know why they didn't want to build the walls? Because they're getting money. <laughs> they're getting rich off of that stuff. Amen. They were selling stuff to people and people was having to do hard things and give up their families and everything just to live and survive. And my friend, they was getting filthy rich all that stuff. And they said, you ain't gonna, we gonna make sure you don't change nothing. We've been sitting here all these years uh, doing nothing. Uh, but we've been getting rich off of y'all uh, and we ain't losing. Uh, and we're gonna, we are determined you're not, uh, you're not, you won't build a work. We're gonna make sure you don't build it. <laughs> And you know what? We got an adversary out there. He don't want right. the devil, for one thing. Your adversary, the devil, he don't want you to build the work of God here. He's mad ever since we started from the old building out there. Sister Janet, we remember them days, don't we? Amen. The old days back there when we was out there in that little old where the fellowship hall is. We had a meeting in there. Man, we'd have so many people in there you couldn't move. It'd be so hot you couldn't breathe. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, we had some good meetings down there. And I look at it, my friend, you know what? That we could have still been sitting back yonder. My friend, that little hole back there somewhere. And my friend, people are, well, we, could, we need a new building, but we can't build one. We need a new people we ain't got room for, so we're just going to quit. And we can still sit back there. But somebody, my friend, had a burden to go to work. But you know what? The devil has fought all the way, even to this day. The devil has fought because he don't want to build one. He, don't, he ain't happy with what's going on in Emmanuel Baptist. His church. <laughs> he don't want you to take on no more missionaries. He don't want you to accomplish anything else for God. In fact, he'd like to see the doors closed. And the outside, the enemies, he said, our adversary, they said, my friend, you know what? They started ridiculing in chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1, it says, but it's come to pass that when Sanabat had heard that we built a wall, he was wroth and took great indignation, mocked the Jews, and he spake before his brother and said, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make it into the day? Will they revive the st uh, stones out of the heap of rubbish? And Tobiah and uh, the Ammonite was said, said, if a fox go up against it, it'll fall. They begin to ridicule the work of God. I'm going to tell you what, my friend, everybody out here ain't got good words to say about a man in Baptist church. <laughs> People ridicule you. Well, they, they believe in that old King James Bible. Well, you got that right. If you didn't, I wouldn't be here. Amen. They got that old preacher that hawks and hacks and stomps and, and everything else. They got all them singers, you know. They don't sing none of that old goofy music. Uh, and they got people that shouts and worship God. You don't know what's going to happen over there. And they don't ever get out of 12. <laughs> I 
I just slipped out. I'm sorry. Uh, they don't ever get out there. They're, they're all there long services. And, and they got all, you know, they, hey, they have all kinds of meetings. And they have everything. Uh, and they don't like that. Uh, they, and they want to fight it. They want to ridicule. You don't have to go to church so much. You don't need all that preaching. Uh, one time when they'll fight, the adver- even religious adversaries fight us. Uh, they will want us to succeed and build a work for God. Amen. <laughs> The voice of disturbance. He said, look in, look in chapter 2, verse number 19. Uh, uh, the Bible says in that verse of Scripture, he said, Santa Bala and, uh, and Tobiah the servant, they, they laughed us to scorn and spies us and said, what is thing, this thing you do? Will you rebel against the king? Uh, and my friend, verse number 10 says, uh, and Santa Bala and Tobiah, the, uh, as they said, it grieved them exceedingly. There was come a man to see the welfare of the children of Israel. Chapter 4, my friend, verse number 7, he said, It came to pass when Sanabalah and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites, and my friend, they heard it, they made up that the breaches began to stop them, and they, and they conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem. <laughs> you know what? The adversary said, You ain't going to build one if we can help it. Yep. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> you ain't going to build one if we can help it. Well, let me just say this in passing, and I've got to change points. Did you know there are some people that sit that's probably here at a man, you Baptist church? I don't know. I, I, I just come up here and enjoy and have a good time. I don't know what's going on. I guess if I was here more, I'd know. <laughs> but I guarantee you, everybody, everybody ain't happy. And everybody that's been through here ain't been happy. Right. What I'm saying is, there's some churches, they people in there, they don't want it to go no more. They're happy with just what they got. They're afraid if somebody comes in, they'll lose their position. They'll lose it. They'll, you know, they'll lose their hope. They'll, they don't, we're, we're, happy, we're happy. We got good offerings. We got a good preacher. We got good singers. Everything's going well. We don't need anybody else. We don't need, I, I know churches right now, my friend, they'll, they'll run people off because they don't want them no more. They're adversaries against the work of God sitting right there on the pews. They don't want anything else. <laughs> if somebody gets to sing more than they do, they get upset. Uh, I don't mean to preach like this, but I, this is what I got. Uh, somebody gets to preach before they get to preach, they get mad. Why do they get to preach all the time? Why do they get to sing all the time? Why do we, why do we have to do this, Brother Doug? Why, why can't we just come to church and sing and preach and go home? Why do we have to work this? Why do we have to do that? Why do we have to do that? I tell you what, because he's trying to build a work for God. And my friends, some people are saying we can't do it, and others are saying you won't do it because we're going to make sure that you don't do it. <laughs> come on, now help me out. Huh? Say amen right there. Huh? Come on, listen. So they, they, there's that ridiculing crowd. There's that anger. Some of them got anger. Some of them got violent. Amen? I mean, there was anger and violence, and, and they got mad. All because Nehemiah was trying to build a work for God. <laughs> and pastor, none of those years, I've had a few folks get mad. Ain't it amazing? You, they can love you one Sunday and hate you the next. They'll go out one Sunday and say, Preacher, we love you. You're the best preacher in the world. They go out the next Sunday and say, We hate you. We're leaving. We're going somewhere else. <laughs> Bye. You know. <laughs> don't want people around hates me. <laughs> I can't imagine nobody hating me. Can y'all? Amen. I just can't imagine nobody hating me. Amen. But, but there people do that. Then they rise up and they say, Well, we don't need to do that. We don't need to come. And you know what? The adversaries will fight. The devil will fight. Hey, listen. Let me just throw this in in passing. Our government is fighting against us. Our government don't want us to do a work for God. I'm talking about an old time, holy time, Holy Ghost meeting and changing lives. They don't want that. And the government's fighting that. And my friend, listen, society's fighting that. And the world's are fighting. And the flesh is fighting that. And church people's even fighting. And so Judah said, Judah said, well, uh, 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 I doubt. We, we can't because of all this rush. And, and the adversary said, uh, you won't do it. We're going to make sure you don't accomplish nothing for God. Look in verse 14. This is Nehemiah talking. And Nehemiah said, and I looked and rose up and said, he said, he said uh, Nehemiah had something to say. Other nobles to the rulers and the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, and your wife. You know what? Uh, my friend Judah, the voice of doubt, said we can't. The adversary, the, the voice of disturbance, said you won't. But here is Nehemiah, the voice of desire and deliverance. He said God shall, God can, and God will. Remember, the Lord, the Lord is the one that's building this work for God. 
And he will build the work of God. He'll overcome the caners. He'll overcome the adversaries. That's what he says. He says, remember the Lord. This is the voice of, of, of faith. This is the voice of a followerness. In chapter 2, chapter 2, verse number 20. You know, they never did shake old Nehemiah. They, they said, well, if a fox go up against it, it's going to fall. And they laughed and scorned. But in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 20, the, uh, Nehemiah said, Then and I answered out of them and said unto him, The God of heaven! He will prosper us, therefore we his servants will rise and build. You have no portion. Now, my friend Genesis or chapter two, verse eighteen, my friend he said, I told them of the good hand which of God which is upon me, and also the king's word, and they said, Let us rise and build, for they strengthened their hands for the work. Uh, chapter four, verse nine, after they ridiculed and said a fox will be in the fall, he said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God and set a watch against them that day because of them. And he comes down there and said, Hey, remember, don't be afraid of that crowd. Remember the Lord. Lord, which is great and terrible. Fight for you. Remember, the Lord is greater than your adversary. Remember, the Lord is remember is greater than those complainers and those quitters. Trust God. Trust God. Look to God. And the Bible said he set up a plan and they built the walls. And from that point right there, 52 days or less, the wall was built and the city was secure. <laughs> what he's saying is God can. Now let me give you this. You say, preacher, how did they build the wall? Well, because they prayed. Chapter 4, verse 4. My friend, it said, Hear, O, when they said the fox go up against it, look at chapter 4, verse 4. Look at your Bible. Verse 4, he said, Hear, O God, we are despised and turn the reproach upon their own head. You know what? First thing you do when the opposition comes, when those caners come, first thing you did is start praying. I'm going to tell you how you can build a work for God. You better become a praying church. You, got to pray. you ain't got a praying church, you ain't got a chance. And the Bible said they prayed. They prayed. And then the Bible said they had unity. Verse 6 said, So built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together, for the people had a mind. Thereof, for the people had a mind. To work. You know what? They had a unity. Everybody went to work. Hey, let me give you something. I gave this to Jordan last night. I never really thought about this, but I gave it to Jordan. You know where when they're fighting the walls of Jericho? Now listen to them. When they're fighting the wall, you know, they come and give us the walls of Jericho. And, and Joshua's laying up on his face and God shows up and he tells him what to do you know you go down there and, and you walk around one time a day and, and uh, for six days on the seventh day all, you walk seven times and the whole nation of Israel didn't go just a group uh, 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 the Levites and different ones they, they carried and they walked around seven days he said and he said and all the people right. shout and we brought that trumpet he said all the people shout if one of them hadn't shouted, walls wouldn't fail. You say, why? Because God said all of them shout. <laughs> I could use an illustration right here. I could say, all right, I want everybody in here. I want everybody here to stand on your feet, raise your hand, I to praise the Lord. There'd be somebody wouldn't get off of your beach. <laughs> I ain't doing that. Why do you ask that for? I'm tired. I had a shower. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. Read it. He said, everybody shout. All of you. If it had been the nation of Israel right here, everybody in the building shouted, but you, walls wouldn't have fell. He said, take seven one of them. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. Pastor can get up, somebody get up and say, we're going to do this. And all the way somebody says, well, I ain't interested in that. <laughs> I can do that if they want to. That ain't my thing. <laughs> that just ain't my thing. I'm backward, I'm bashful. Amen. Nehemiah got up and said, hey, we're all just going to take every one of us. Can't have no gaps. They're building around the wall. This group's are building here. This group. We can't have no gaps. We can't have no. We got to have unity. You got to build. He put his family behind him. He said, build for your family. Build for your wife. Build for your children. And you build and you build and you build. And we all build and we all work together and have unity. The wall. Hey, if they hadn't had unity, they'd never got the wall built. If one little group decided, well, we ain't going to build. And that verse over there wouldn't have been in the Bible. So built with the walls because there'd been a hole. 
There'd been a gap. Come on now, help me out. God said, everybody said, I guarantee you, I'm about halfway tempted to do that. I guarantee you, if I said, everybody stand and raise your hands out, somebody in here, I wouldn't want to embarrass you, but somebody wouldn't do it. Amen? Amen but they had unity. Let me get off that. They had prayer, they had unity, they had a reason. Verse 14, he says, fight for your daughters and your sons. And they said, hey, we're to fight and build a work for God here because that little baby that Brandy's holding is going to lead a place to worship God. Uh, that little baby back here is going to need a place to worship. Them kids I walk through out there, they go. He said, "Fight for them, build a work for them, because they going to need God. They they they, they going to need more of God than we ever thought. Than we ever thought we would. They're coming up in a religious generation. They're coming up, my friend, when the devils are fighting. They going to need a place to worship. You ought to build a work for God." He said, "The reason is those coming behind you build a work for God." They had unity. They had reason. They had perseverance. Verse 15, it says they, they all went on. They, they got one sword and one, one trial, and they're laying brick, and they're laying walk, rock, and they well, got the sword in case, and their half was working, and half was watching, and they're working together, and they're persevering. That little by little, they're building the walls. Amen? And then the Bible said they had, they had uh, faithfulness. Verse 23 said, Neither I nor my brother nor my servants nor the men of the uh, uh, guards which followed me, none of us put off our clothes. Hey, you know what? They was faithful. They was right there. In fact, they just stayed. They took. They, they come in from work. They wasn't no rest, really. Because when they come in from work, you know what they do? They had to watch. They had to pull guard. Took a bat and pulled guard. They pulled guard. <laughs> Next day, they get up and went back to work. They was faithful. They said, We ain't going nowhere. Amen. And then the Bible said they had success. They had success. The Bible said in 52 days, the wall was standing tall. You know why? They overruled the caners, and they overruled their adversary, and they said, we can do it. And God, God will help us. Amen. You know what's wrong? Most of us, we're looking in the wrong direction. We're looking out there. Man, what a mess we're in. What a mess. Amen? What a mess we're in. This is awful. My youngest son, a few years ago, then on the farm, before we sold the farm, he tap tank messed up. He didn't have no money. And uh, he said, well, what are we going to do? I said, well, it's stopped up. I guess we're going to dig it. It's 14 degrees outside he said that's cold I said well yeah it's cold <laughs> but you got to take a shower you got to go to the bathroom <laughs> and he stood out there and looked well who do you think it is I said it's right here I got one of them things you know and I was pushing it down in there and I said it's right here oh well, what we're going to do I said we're going to go to dig it I said you got a back hole he said no I said well get your shovel what I said. I said, get your shovel. And I said, you ain't got no money to pay nobody to come do it. And I ain't paid it. We're going to dig it out. And we got there and worked and labored and dug. Worked and labored and dug. Top that thing off. Found that little whole thing. Pulled it up. Cleaned all that. Put it back together. You know what? It was the floor. If we'd listened to him, he'd have been standing there and say, it's cold. <laughs> That's a lot of digging. <laughs> Can't we do anything else? Can't we come out with some kind of quick fix? Yeah. I said, no, we're going to go to work and we're going to dig it. Because I said, if you call him, it's going to be a, a three or four days a week before they come out here. Because right. I said, they ain't going to come out here either because it's cold. They're going to put you off a week or two. So I said, if you don't take a bath tonight, you don't use a bathroom tonight, we're going to dig this out. Right. It's hard. A lot of work. Ground froze. We dug it. Fixed it. At night. I went home, slept in my house. They could take showers. Wife could cook. They could go to the restroom. Amen. Well, now we could have stood around and heard, well, we can't. Oh, no. My hands, I don't get my hand dirty. I ain't want no blisters. <laughs> I don't want to smell that thing when we take the lid off. <laughs> Whew, I don't know where I come from. Amen. But, it, it, but you know what? We went ahead and accomplished it. You know what's wrong with us today? We're hollering, I can't, we can't. 
We just can't. We can't get Emmanuel no bigger. Oh, yeah, you can. You can get it bigger. <laughs> you can fill up these empty pews. You ought to find your pews. Say, that's going to win my pew. I'm going to fill that up. Amen. I'd like to see so many people in here. Couldn't even see them all out there. They had to sit up here. Right. Amen. Yeah. Put chairs in the baptistry. They can sit there and look over the, over the tank. <laughs> Build the walls around here and put a Bible in. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, preacher, we can't. Oh, yeah, you can't. <laughs> Judah said we can't. The adversary said you won't. Nehemiah said we can and God shall. We're going to accomplish the work for God. Amen. You know what it takes? It just takes some people going to work. Doing your part. If you'll notice that one of them done something. One of them done their part. Amen. I wonder what happened if we just not in 2021 we just went to work. Accomplish something for God. Amen. I'm trying to close, but you know, I thought about this. Can you look around? Can you look around this morning, tonight? See anybody you got here? See anybody that come to this church because of you? Because you went and got them? I hope you can. And you all look around and say, well, I got them here. That's good. I can get some more. Wouldn't that something be something next year? You come up here. And I'll just use you, brother, since you're smiling at me. Come up here next time. You say, Brother Mike, you see that man right over there? I said, yeah. I visited him got him in here. They got saved. They got right with God. They're coming to church now. You ain't met them. Come over here and I want you to meet them. They're our new people. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Wouldn't it be something if we had a lunch and had a dinner and everybody cooked? <laughs> Y'all didn't get that, did you? Some people well, I can't cook. I ain't bringing nothing. You know what? They bring one little bowl of peas. They don't even like peas. They bring a bowl of peas and eat everything about that guy. It's just that's wonderful. We're going to have enough food. If everybody cooked, you wouldn't have no problem. <laughs> Some of you ladies that ain't cooking, you reckon your head ain't looking. <laughs> huh? You can answer it. Everybody, everybody, everybody. There's always somebody say, well, that's my, my thing. I can't do that. You know what it takes every one of us working, laboring together. Amen. Working, laboring, co labors together. What they said. One of them said, We can't. The other one said, You won't. But I tell you, we need some of them people like Nehemiah said, We can and God shall and He will build. Let's go to work. Amen. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.